Wendy's Busy Day, a Bob the Builder book, read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons. One cold Monday morning, Wendy walked into Bob's front room and found him by the fire, wrapped in a blanket. Ah, 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 Jim, sneezed Bob. Goodness, you look ill, cried Wendy. I am ill, sniffed Bob. I've got a really bad cold. You better stay indoors and keep warm, said Wendy. I can't do that, spluttered Bob. We've got a big resurfacing job to do on the main road into town. It's got to be finished by five o'clock tonight. I know, said Wendy. Why don't I go out with the machines? After all, either the work gets done with me supervising or it doesn't get done at all. Uh, 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 chew, sneezed Bob. I'll tell the machine, said Wendy, as she headed briskly out of the door. Bob's got a very bad cold, Wendy told the machines. He's going to stay indoors until he gets better. How will we do the resurfacing without Bob, fretted Scoop. You've got me, smiled Wendy. Hooray, cheered the machines. Me and Lofty will stay behind to look after Bob, said Scoop. Wendy hopped on board Muck. Can we fix it, she called. Yes, we can, yelled the team, and they roared out of the yard. Wendy gulped with surprise when she saw the big potholes in the road. Oh dear, it's very bumpy, she said. Rolly chuckled. Hey, Wendy, flattening bumps is my job, he said. OK, smiled Wendy. Let's do it. Back at home, Bob sat sneezing. Duh, he muttered as he wiped his nose. I feel terrible, wheezed Bob. On the town road, Dizzy mixed concrete so that the team could fill in a big pothole. Then Muck roared up. Here it comes, he yelled as he lifted his dumper to tip out the sticky road surface. I'm right behind you, rumbled Rolly as he moved in to flatten everything out. Squelch! Wendy beamed and clapped. That looks perfect, she cried. As Dizzy moved over to give Rolly more room, she spotted an old football lying by the side of the road. Ooh, look what I found, she squeaked excitedly as she tapped it in with her front wheel. And Dizzy's got the ball, she cried as she chased after it. She's racing down the wing. Is she going to score? No, stop, yelled Wendy as Dizzy headed for the sticky wet road surface. But Dizzy didn't hear. She scored, shouted the little cement mixer and landed splat in the sticky stuff. Oh, wailed Dizzy as she watched her wheel slowly sinking. I'm stuck. Don't worry, gasped Wendy. We'll get you out. How, rumbled Rolly. If we go in there, we'll get stuck as well. You've got to do something, shrieked Dizzy. You can't just leave me here to set like a rock. I'll phone Bob, said Wendy. Yes, phone Bob. He'll know what to do, said Muck. Wendy started to call Bob, but then stopped. No, she said firmly. Bob's ill. We must fix this ourselves. We can't go in, continued Wendy, but Dizzy has to be pulled out. How do we do that? I've got it, roared Muck. It's Lofty we need. He'll pull Dizzy out in a flash. Good thinking, Muck, cried Wendy. We've got to be quick, though, added Muck. Jump on, Wendy. Muck whizzed back to the yard, then screeched to a stop next to Lofty and Scoop. Lofty, we need your help, cried Wendy. Dizzy's stuck in some concrete and we need you to pull her out quickly. Lofty to the rescue, smiled Lofty. Bob was snoozing in his armchair when he was woken by the machines revving out of the yard. Scoop, Bob called, opening the front door. What was all that noise that woke me up? And where's Lofty gone? Oh, uh, he went to see how the others were getting on, Scoop replied. Well, it's four o'clock now, fretted Bob, so they only got one hour before the road opens. Oh, dear, he sighed to Pilchard. Things weren't going at all smoothly on the town road. 
Lofty lowered his big metal hook towards Dizzy's handle. Get a grip, Dizzy, he clanked. Got it, squeaked Dizzy as the hook locked on. Pull! Lofty nervously pulled Dizzy up, but suddenly he lost his grip. Dizzy crashed to the ground. Try again, yelled Dizzy crossly. Holding their breath, Wendy, Rolly and Mark watched Lofty's winching machinery strain under the pressure. Slowly, very slowly, Lofty hauled Dizzy free of the concrete. Yes, squealed Dizzy as he gently lowered her down onto the ground. Hooray for Lofty, cheered Wendy. Thank you, thank you, giggled Dizzy in relief. Oh, goodness, gasped Wendy as she looked at her watch. Look at the time. We've only got an hour left. Come on, let's finish the road. With Wendy supervising, Muck tipped the last load of road surface for Rolly to flatten. Five o'clock, yelled Wendy. Time to open the road. Quickly, Lofty cleared away the safety barriers. Everyone gathered around the tape blocking off the road. In a loud voice, Wendy said, I now pronounce the town road open. And she slipped through the tape with a pair of scissors. Hooray, cheered the machines. The first vehicle to use the resurfaced road was Travis. With Spud on his back. What's going on here? called Travis. We've mended the road with Wendy, roared Muck. Spud inspected the newly resurfaced road. You've missed a bit he said, pointing at the ground. It looks perfect to me, said Wendy anxiously. Only teasing, laughed Spud. Back at the yard, Bob hurried out to meet everybody. We did it, Bob, called Wendy. We finished the road. What a dream, groaked Bob. Thank you all so much. Um, it's cold out here, fretted Lofty. Shouldn't you get back indoors, Bob? Okay, okay, laughed Bob. I'll have an early night. We all need an early night, Wendy yawned. Later that night, just as the machines were drifting off to sleep, Dizzy nudged Muck's undercarriage. Muck, she whispered. Mm, mumbled Muck. Wasn't that a great goal I scored today, said Dizzy. Muck opened his mouth to reply, but something started tickling the back of his nose. Uh, 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 cue, he sneezed. Now Muck's got Bob's cold, chuckled Scoop. Uh, 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 cue, sneezed Muck. The end. If you'd like more books like this, we'd love to see you um, join us in some more Bob the Builders or plenty more other different kind of books we've got to share as well. And please hit subscribe below. Thank you. Bob the Builder, Spud the Dragon, read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons. Over at the school, Spud was delivering a ladder to Mrs Percival. Thank you, Spud, said Mrs Percival. This will come in handy for the school play. On his way out of the schoolyard, Spud noticed a pile of dressing up clothes on a table. Ha ha, look at all these goodies, Spud said as he grabbed an eye patch and headscarf. Ahoy! Beware of Spud the Pirate! Arr! he cried, grabbing a cutlass and swishing it around. Then Spud spotted a hobby horse and cowboy hat on the table and instantly changed into Spud the Lone Ranger. Away! Spud shouted as he galloped through the yard, bumping into a big green costume. Cool! What's this? said Spud as he crawled inside and became Spud the Dragon. Rawr, cried Spud as he raced away. I'm sure Mrs Percival won't mind if I borrow this costume for a bit. A little while later, Spud the Dragon saw Muck on his way back to the yard. Hee hee, time for some fun, chuckled Spud. Who are you? stammered Muck. I'm a magic dragon, Spud answered. I'll grant you a wish if you close your eyes. So Muck closed his eyes and thought hard. I wish, said Muck excitedly. I wish I was twice as big as I am now so that I could shift lots and lots of mud. 
Spud was trying hard not to giggle as he drew a big black nose on Muck's face without him knowing. Hmm, continued Muck. Or how about, I wish I wasn't ever scared of the dark. Spud added some long cat's whiskers to Muck's face. Keep your eyes closed, whispered Spud. And then he ran off. Hello, said Muck. Mr. Dragon. Muck opened his eyes slowly. He's vanished, he gasped in amazement. Wow, so he was magic after all. But where's my wish? He raced back to the yard to see if it was waiting for him there. But as soon as Muck arrived, all the other machines burst out laughing. Mmm, what's that on your face, Muck? giggled Dizzy. What, what, is it mud? Muck asked. No, you've got a cat face, chuckled Scoop. Wow, I wonder if this has got anything to do with the magic dragon, Muck said. Dizzy, Scoop and Rolly looked confused. Over at Mrs Potts's house, Bob and Wendy were working in the loft. Careful, Bob, said Wendy. You must stand on the wooden beams or you'll... Ah! cried Bob as his foot crashed through the floor. Oh dear, exclaimed Mrs Potts. Just look at my ceiling. Can we fix it? called Wendy. Uh, yes, we can, Bob replied in a quieter voice than usual. Wendy called outside for Lofty's help. We might need some extra paint and plaster, she said. Could you pop back to the yard to get them? Okay, Wendy, said Lofty. But as Lofty returned to the yard, he saw a very scary sight. A dragon with big googly eyes. Rawr, growled Spud the dragon. Ah, cried Lofty. He raced back to Mrs Potts's house as fast as he possibly could. Bob managed to free his leg and was repairing the plasterboard in Mrs Potts's ceiling. Wendy was in the loft laying down rolls of insulating material. There you are, Mrs Potts, said Bob at last. We're all done and we didn't need that extra paint and plaster after all. Just then, Lofty raced up. Oh, Wendy, oh, Bob, he cried. A big scary dragon jumped out at me down the road. Oh, Lofty, said Wendy. There aren't any dragons around here. There are. There is. I saw it, Lofty said. It's all right, said Wendy. Calm down. I'll tell you what. Why don't Bob and I come with you and have a look? Rawr, said Spud, hopping down the road. Ha ha, he he, See, there it is, said Lofty, who was ready to race in the opposite direction. That's no dragon, Wendy said. I know that voice from somewhere. Uh-oh, I'm off, said Spud, realising he'd been found out. He jumped over the wall and ran into the woods. Come on, after him, called Wendy. Bob and Wendy chased the dragon through the woods. As the dragon ran, the branches ripped off more and more of the costume until... Wah! cried the dragon as he tripped, and his mask flew off. Aha! I thought so, said Wendy. It's Spud! Wendy, Spud and Bob went back to the schoolyard to tell Mrs Percival what had happened. My dragon costume, she said. There's no time to fix it before the school play tonight. Oh, I'm really sorry, Mrs Percival, said Spud, hanging his head. Wait, I've got an idea, said Wendy, and she dashed out of the schoolyard. A while later, Hello, everyone, roared a voice near the gate. It was Wendy in the repaired dragon costume. She'd used some of the material in Mrs Potts's loft to mend the costume, so it looked as good as new and just as scary. So scary, in fact, that Spud took one look at it and screamed. Ugh! It's a real dragon! he cried as he raced out of the yard. Come back, Spud! called Wendy. Hide, everyone! Hide! screamed Spud, running off down the road. Oh dear, said Wendy as she took off the mask. It's only me, Spud. The end. If you'd like to read more books with us, we'd love to have you join us. Hit subscribe below. We've got plenty more Bob the Builder and other lots of lovely books to read too. Travis Paints the Town, a Bob the Builder book, read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons. 
It was a busy morning in Bob's building yard. There was a long list of jobs that had to be done that day. Right, Bob, Wendy called. You, Muck and Rolly are to finish the new section of the town road. Travis will follow with the road marking machine in his trailer. What's a road marking machine? asked Muck. It's a special machine that paints lines down the middle of a new road, Bob explained. Cars travel on either side of the line so they don't bump into each other. It's ever so important to keep the lines straight, added Wendy. The team set off for the new section of road. When they got there, Rolly thundered up and down, flattening every bump in sight. Nearly finished, he called across to Bob, who was unloading the road marking machine. Good, said Bob. Then I can start painting the road. The busy machines did not notice Spud peeping at them from behind a bush in a nearby field. When he saw what they were doing, he gave a big grin. That looks like fun, Spud chuckled. Bob pushed the road marking machine into the middle of the road and loaded it with with white paint. He was just about to start painting lines when his mobile phone rang. Hello, Mrs Potts, Bob said. What can I do for you? No, don't worry. I'll pop over right away. What's up, Bob? rumbled Rolly. Mrs. Potts's fence is broken, and she doesn't want her dog to get out onto the road, Bob replied. I'd better go over there. It won't take me long to fix it. Okay, Bob, we'll wait here, said Rolly. Bob jumped onto Muck and roared away. While Travis, Rolly, and Bird waited for Bob to come back, they didn't see Spud creep towards the road marking machine. He quietly dragged the machine behind Travis, then unhooked the empty trailer and attached the road marking machine in its place. The naughty scarecrow then slipped back to the bushes. Tee hee, Spud giggled. Now for some fun. Spud walked out, whistling loudly as if he had just arrived. Hi, Travis, he called. I've got a message for you. Farmer Pickles wants you down at the pond. It's really important. I'd better get going, said Travis. Then he roared off, pulling the road marking machine behind him. As Travis hurried away, the road marking machine bounced along after him, painting wiggly lines all over the new road. Ha ha, chortled Spud as he inspected the wet white paint. Stop, Travis, come back, Rolly bellowed when he saw what was happening. Come on, bird. We can't just stand here and watch Travis make a mess of Bob's new road. We've got to stop him. This is the best fun ever, laughed Spud as Rolly lumbered off after Travis. Travis hurried to the duck pond as fast as his wheels could turn. He didn't look left or right as he rushed on his way to help Farmer Pickles. And that was why the little tractor didn't spot Farmer Pickles working in a field next to the country lane. Travis whizzed straight past him. Oh dear, gasped Farmer Pickles when he saw the wiggly white lines trailing behind Travis. And when Rolly and Bird rolled up, Rolly, called Farmer Pickles, follow that tractor. Wendy was in her office when Farmer Pickles phoned. Dear me, paint everywhere, she cried. Don't worry, I'll tell Bob right away. Bob was busy hammering the last nail back into Mrs. Potts's fence. Bang, bang, bang. There you go, he said. That should keep your dog nice and safe. Bob's mobile phone rang. Hi, Wendy, said Bob. What, Travis? Paint everywhere. I'm on my way. Travis was a lot lighter than Rolly and a lot faster too. The poor steamroller panted and spluttered as he trundled along after Travis with Farmer Pickles and Bird on board. Oh, please stop. Rolly groaned. Travis! yelled Farmer Pickles at the top of his voice, but Travis still couldn't hear them over the roar of his engine. Travis raced along the road. As he went faster and faster, the lines he painted were wigglier and wigglier. While Rolly and Farmer Pickles struggled to catch up to, with Travis, Bob and Muck were chasing frantically after him too. Quick as you can, urged Bob. We've got to stop him before he paints the whole town white. I'm already in top gear, spluttered Muck as he revved up his engine. I don't think I can go any faster. Try, Muck, cried Bob. Please try. 
Travis zoomed along the road and started to head across a field towards the duck pond. Spud peeped out from behind the bush to admire the mess. He he he! He chuckled. Now Travis is painting the grass white too. Then poor tired Rolly wheezed past him. His heavy machinery clattered and rattled as he trundled after ta- trundled after Travis. Ugh! Growled Rolly, as Travis bounced out of sight. Spud chased after them, laughing all the way. Bob and Muck raced down the hill towards the duck bo- pond at the bottom. Bob got a terrible fright when he saw Travis heading straight for them. Watch out, Muck, he yelled. Muck tried to avoid the runaway tractor. He slammed on his brakes and screeched to a stop. Help, roared Travis, swerving sideways. Out of his hubcaps f- f- fell off the w- fell off the wheel and flew through the air. The line marker zigzagged behind him, then became unhooked. It rolled down the road, skidded sideways, and turned over. Thick white paint spilled everywhere. Farmer Pickles and Rolly were next to arrive. Everyone stared at the puddle of wet paint. Just look at this mess, Bob groaned. Poor Travis was very upset. It really, really wasn't my fault, Bob, he cried. I didn't know the line marking machine was hooked on to me. I don't even know how it got there. I tried my best to stop him, Bob, panted Rolly, <sighs> but I couldn't catch him. Where were you going? said Farmer Pickles. Spud told me you needed me, said Travis. I never said that, exclaimed Farmer Pickles. Behind them, a bush started to shake with laughter. Spud, yelled Farmer Pickles, what have you been up to? Me? Nothing, Spud replied. So who hooked the line marker onto Travis, Bob demanded. Um, it was me, Spud finally confessed. It was just a bit of fun. Farmer Pickles glared at the naughty scarecrow. You've got some cleaning up to do, he said crossly. Farmer Pickles got a big bucket, filled it with soapy water and gave Spud a scrubbing brush. Off you go, he said, and keep scrubbing until you've cleaned up all the paint. Spud scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. He followed the wiggly lines all the way around the town, then along the country lanes. By the, a big one. Yeah, by the time Spud finished, it was night time. There wasn't a trace of white paint anywhere. Can Spud scrub it? He said to himself. Yes, he can. The end. If you enjoyed this book, please do hit subscribe below. We'd love to share more Bob the Builder and plenty of other kinds of books with you too. Bob the Builder. Bob Saves the Hedgehogs. Buy books for kids by Flying Dragons. Bob, Scoop, Muck and Rolly were on their way to work. They were going to resurface a road by Farmer Pickle's field. Nearly there, called Scoop as he rumbled past Travis and Spud. Spud waved and smiled, but Travis was staring hard at something on the ground. Hey, Spud, he said. Come and see what I've found. I can't, said Spud. I'm busy scaring crows. There aren't any crows, Travis pointed out. Shows what a good job I'm doing, chuckled Spud. Please come over here, begged Travis. He nodded at the ground. Look, a family of upside-down hairbrushes. Don't be daft, laughed Spud. They're not hairbrushes, they're hedgehogs. I've never seen hedgehogs around here before, said Travis. That's because they usually only come out at night, Spud told him. I expect they're awake because they're hungry. The biggest hedgehog scurried past Travis and Spud and then waited for the rest of his family to catch up. I just hope they know how to cross the road, worried Travis. On the roadside, Muck was reversing noisily. Left a bit, right a bit, yelled Bob. Good, tip it there. With a loud squeak, Muck poured stone chippings from his dumper onto the road. 
Great stuff, shouted Bob. Now, Scoop, I need you to spread these chippings around evenly to give the road a nice new surface. <gasps> no problem, Bob, chugged Scoop. You can rely on me. I think he's got the stone chippings. Stone chippings. That's right. With a mighty heave, Scoop pushed the enormous pile of stones What's right this? across the road. That's a pile of stones. That's what Scoop is pushing around. Nice job, Scoop, said Bob. Thanks, Bob, Bob puffed Bob, Scoop. That. That's right. Rolly, it's all yours, called Bob. Roll the surface nice and flat. With all the noise, nobody had spotted the hedgehog family scurrying down the hill towards the main road. All right, rumbled Rolly. Let's rock and roll. Scrunch. Rolly's huge wheels flattened the stones beneath him. Crunch. And then, just in time, Bob saw the hedgehogs. Oh no, he gasped. Rolly, look out! Rolly ground to a slow halt. Why is everyone waving at me? he asked. Because there's hedgehogs on the road, Bob explained. Where? puzzled Rolly. There! cried Scoop. Right under your nose. Once the hedgehog. I did get the hedgehog shot. Yeah. That. That's right. Once the hedgehogs had crossed the road, Bob checked to make sure it was safe to start work again. All clear, Rolly, Bob called. As Rolly scrunched forward, Bob suddenly noticed the hedgehog family scurrying back across the road. Hedgehogs, cried Bob. Rolly, stop. But Rolly couldn't hear. Eek, squeaked Muck. He shot bravely forward and scooped the hedgehogs from underneath Rolly. Phew, sighed Bob. That was a close thing. Rolly couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the hedgehogs snuggled up in Muck's scoop. Where did they come from? asked Rolly. Bob was worried about the hedgehogs. Once this road is open to traffic, these hedgehogs won't be safe, he said. Anyone got any ideas? How would people get across a busy road? Asked Scoop thoughtfully. On a bridge, Bob replied. No, cried Scoop. Don't think over. Think under. You mean a subway, Bob exclaimed. Scoop, that's a brilliant idea. Let's get to work. But what about the hedgehogs? Chugged Mark. They can't just sit here. Quite right, said Bob. Take them to the yard for a moment. Muck. Oh, and when you come back, bring some pipes with you. All right, Bob, said Muck, revving up loudly. I'll ring Wendy from my mobile and tell her you're on your way, Bob added. Hedgehog rescue, here I come rattled Muck as he set off back to the yard. At the yard, it was quiet, very quiet. Pilchard was dozing in the sun. Lofty was playing hoopla with tyres and traffic cones. Yes, he clattered as he whizzed a tyre through the air, but the tyre missed the cone and rolled up the side of a wall. Oh no! cried Lofty as the tyre bounced back down and landed plonk on top of Pilchard. Phwah! she yelled crossly. Sorry, Pilchard, gulped Lofty. In the office, Wendy, Wendy's phone rang. She picked it up. Hello, Bob's building yard, said Wendy. Hello, Wendy, said Bob. I'm just calling to tell you that Muck's on his way to you. With four hedgehogs. Four hedgehogs, gulped Wendy. Muck trundled along the road with his front scoop raised high. 
so the hedgehogs could have a good look around. Coo wee, Mock squeaked Dizzy as he roared into the yard. What are you doing back so early? I'm on a hedgehog rescue, said Muck proudly, lowering his front scoop. As the hedgehogs rolled out, Lofty started to tremble all over. Ah, he dithered. What's going on? cried Wendy, running out of the office. Mice with spikes, trembled Lofty, hiding under the lean-to. Keep them away from me. You big silly billy, laughed Wendy. They're not mice, they're hedgehogs. Pilchard crept up to one of the hedgehogs and mewed curiously. The frightened hedgehog raised its prickles and poked Pilchard hard on the nose. Whoa! howled Pilchard as she leapt away. Wendy brought the hedgehog some water. They lapped it up with their little pink tongues. Oh, sighed Dizzy. Aren't they lovely? Er, uh, I think so, said Lofty. I'm certainly. We'd better get those pipes, Muck, said Wendy. Bob said he needed them right away. At the roadside, Bob was deciding just where to put the tunnel for the hedgehogs. You can start digging here, Bob told Scoop, showing the machine the spot on his plans. Scoop pushed out his pistons and started to dig up the road, just as Muck trundled back with the pipes. He put them down by the side of the road. How are we going to get the hedgehogs back here, Muck asked Bob. Bob smiled and winked. I spoke to Wendy, he replied. She's got a plan. Time for you to go home, little one, said Wendy to the hedgehogs. How are they going to get there? puzzled Lofty. You're going to take them, Wendy announced. Me? gulped Lofty. Wendy carefully loaded the hedgehogs into a basket, which he hung from Lofty's jib. Lofty trundled through town with the basket. After a while, he felt so proud to be helping Wendy that he forgot to be nervous of the hedgehogs at all. At the roadside, Lofty gently lowered the basket onto the ground and the hedgehogs scurried out. I hope the hedgehogs like what we've done for them, said Scoop. There it was, a tiny tunnel, just for hedgehogs. Now they would always be able to cross safely. Off you go, coaxed Scoop. After a little pause, the biggest hedgehog scurried into the tunnel, quickly followed by the other three. Good luck, Bob called, as they all disappeared into the darkness. Take care, added Muck. Nice meeting you, whispered Lofty. My first hedgehog subway, said Bob. The end. If you like this video, please do subscribe or leave comments down below.